Embarking on the path of coaching is a journey filled with both opportunities and challenges. As individuals step into the role of a coach, they bring with them an immense passion for helping others, as well as a commitment to facilitating growth and development. However, in the early stages of this career, it's not at all uncommon to encounter a series of, let's say, pitfalls that can hinder the effectiveness of the coaching process. This exploration into the common mistakes made by new coaches serves as a guide to navigate the complexities of the profession. It's a reflection on the collective wisdom gleaned from years of practice and observation, offering insights how to avoid these errors and instead lay the groundwork for a successful and impactful coaching practice. As we dive into these common mistakes, the focus is not on criticism because we have all done at least two or three of these, but we are focused on learning and growth. It's about identifying the areas where even the most well-intentioned coaches can improve. From the importance of establishing clear metrics for success to the necessity of managing one's own ego, each point we cover is a stepping stone towards becoming a more effective and more empathetic coach. The aim here is to provide you with a roadmap that helps new coaches to not only recognize these potential missteps, but also to equip them with the strategies necessary to overcome them. By doing so, coaches can ensure that they are providing the highest value to their client and truly aiding in their journey towards achieving the goals. In essence, this is an invitation to reflect, to learn, and to evolve together. It's an opportunity to transform the initial challenges of coaching into valuable lessons that enhance one's ability to guide clients through their personal and professional transformations. With this knowledge, new coaches can set the stage for a fulfilling and successful career in the art and science of coaching. Let's get into the seven biggest mistakes new coaches make. The first mistake on this list is overestimating the coach's impact. As coaches, we must recognize that while our guidance is valuable, the true change agent isn't the coach, it's the client. And in fact, the real coaches are the stakeholders. You see, it's the client who has to apply the insights and really do the hard work necessary for the transformation. Our role is to facilitate to support and to challenge, but we can't take credit for the outcomes or the client's achievements. This humility allows us to maintain a clear perspective on our contribution, and it keeps us focused on empowering the client rather than seeking validation for ourselves. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that the coach is in any way a significant factor in the success equation. Sustainable change is a testament to the client's dedication and effort not just the coach's influence. The second mistake is underestimating the importance of follow-up. In our extensive research into the common factors that drive coaching outcomes, I've seen that follow-up is not just a nice to have, it's a must have. It's the mechanism that shows clients that you are genuinely invested in their progress. Without consistent follow-up, even the most insightful coaching sessions can lose their impact. It's about demonstrating that you care, that you're engaged, and that you're committed to seeing real change. Follow-up is the bridge between intention and action, ensuring that the goals set during the coaching don't just remain fancy talk or lofty plans, but they become reality. It's a critical part of the process that keeps both coach and the client accountable and focused on the end goal. Neglecting this step can lead to a perception of indifference, and it can significantly undermine the trust and progress that has been built between you and the client. The third mistake is failing to establish clear measures of success. In the spirit of transparency, I have to admit that this was my biggest blunder. In the realm of coaching, it's far too easy to become preoccupied with the process and lose sight of the outcomes. However, success in coaching should be defined by specific, measurable achievements that align directly with the client's goals. Without these metrics, it's quite challenging and possibly near impossible to gauge progress or to determine the coaching engagement's effectiveness. It's crucial to set up quantifiable benchmarks that reflect the client's priorities and then to regularly review these targets. 
This approach not only provides clarity and direction for the coaching journey, but it also instills a sense of accomplishment as milestones are reached. Clear measures of success are the compass that guides the coaching process, ensuring that every step taken is purposeful and leads towards the desired destination. The fourth mistake is not managing their own ego. This one is almost inextricably linked as either a symptom or a first cause of the first item on our list. As coaches, it's imperative to remember that the coaching process is all about the client, not ourselves. When coaches allow their egos to creep in and take center stage, they risk overshadowing the client's needs and the objectives of the engagement. An unchecked ego can lead to a desire for personal validation and even recognition, which can cloud judgment and impede the ability to listen actively and empathetically. It's essential to maintain a stance of humility and service, focusing on the client's growth and success as the true measure of our effectiveness as coaches. By keeping our egos in check, we create a supportive environment that encourages open dialogue and fosters meaningful change. The fifth mistake is lacking business acumen. It's essential for coaches to understand that coaching is more than just the interpersonal aspects of leadership development, but it's also about how you run a successful practice. You are an entrepreneur now. We have to accept that you're an entrepreneur. This means having a grasp of marketing process, financial management, strategic planning. Coaches need to treat their practice as a business which requires an entirely different set of skills than coaching by itself. And by the way, these skills are not taught in coaching training programs. Fortunately for stakeholder center coaches, we meet about four to five hours a month for open Q&A and community support on topics such as how to set up and build a coaching practice, how to staff administrators and marketers and balance finance sheets. But if you're not part of the community and you lack business acumen, even the most skilled coaches are likely to struggle to attract and retain clients, managing their finances effectively and create a sustainable business model. It's important to invest time in learning these skills or in seeking advice from experts, as this will ensure the longevity and success of your coaching practice. Balancing the art of coaching with the science of business is crucial for thriving in this profession. The sixth mistake is neglecting their own brand and differentiation. Coaches often focus so intently on their clients that they forget to cultivate their own unique identity. It's crucial to develop a personal brand that encapsulates your distinct value proposition, your personal values, and your expertise. This differentiation is what will set you apart in an increasingly crowded market, and it will attract clients who resonate with your specific approach and philosophy on leadership. I wrote a very popular article titled How to Differentiate Yourself as a Coach and posted this on LinkedIn some years ago. I'll link to that in the description, and while you're there, reach out. Go ahead and connect with me. Building a strong personal brand involves not only honing your coaching skills, but also clearly communicating your unique strengths and the specific benefits clients can expect to get from working with you. By establishing a recognizable and respectable brand, you create a platform for your coaching practice to thrive and for clients to easily identify and connect with the unique services you offer. The seventh mistake is not investing in continuous learning. In the ever-evolving landscape of coaching, resting on one's laurels can quite quickly lead to obsolescence. It's vital for coaches to remain a student of their crafts, consistently seeking out new knowledge, skills, and methodologies. This commitment to lifelong learning ensures that we stay current with the latest research, the latest tools, and the latest techniques that can enhance our coaching effectiveness. By embracing a growth mindset, we not only improve our own practice, but we also bring greater value to our clients. Continuous learning is the fuel that keeps the engine of our coaching practice running smoothly, allowing for us to adapt to the changing needs of the market and to our clients. It's an investment that pays dividends in the form of deeper insights, more impactful interventions, and sustained success in our coaching careers. One way to continuously learn, both quickly and informally, is to join communities of executive and leadership coaches from whom you can learn meaningful skills while making new friends and partners.
In wrapping up, it's clear that the journey of a coach is one of perpetual growth and refinement. The path is marked by a series of lessons that, when embraced, can profoundly enhance the effectiveness of one's practice. It's through the recognition of these common challenges and the proactive steps to overcome them that a coach truly comes into their own. The dedication to this continuous cycle of learning and improvement is what distinguishes a good coach from a truly great one. As we conclude, let us carry forward the understanding that each mistake is an opportunity for growth. And with each client we serve, we have the chance to not only facilitate their development, but also to enrich our own coaching journey. If you are passionate about helping leaders make real change and want to learn to avoid making these common, painful mistakes, consider joining the world's largest executive coach network at Stakeholder Centered Coaching. With 5,000 executive coaches in 110 countries, you'll be in good company to learn, network, and be mentored by others. In addition to having a repeatable, measurable coaching process, you'll join powerhouse coaches from around the world in a community designed to support one another and grow together. You can join a free training program by visiting mgscc.net forward slash free coach training or explore the official certified executive coach program at mgscc.net forward slash certification. So what did you think about today's tips and what else do you want us to teach? Share your answers in the comments below.